you know, I'm sure that pilot has either learned how to use micro jump units since then or been, you know, kicked off this team. Um, but I, I really, I think they have the advantage going into this match over mm -hmm. Fearless, and I, I really have confidence that they're going to win. So, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, the Shadow, Shadow Cartel was just uh, displayed uh, very good piloting all in all against Panther. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. one heretic approaching instead of using is a. Uh, it happens. Yeah. I, I, do I do really like when a team kind of we expect to win a match. I think that it gives teams like the Fearless Empire, who are kind of less storied, um, gives them an opportunity to be the underdog and get a big kill. Because mm. even if Fearless don't go on to win the tournament or whatever, if they kill Shadow Cartel here, that's a, like a really big feather in their cap. Yeah. yeah. It's also really fun how uh, in those kind of situations, a lot of the, the other veteran teams really try to get behind the weaker team. So. Mm. Uh, I know I've I've heard plenty in the past of teams uh, matches like this or matches where someone's fighting against Exodus or fighting against uh, Dark Side in the past. The teams like PL and Hydra will go in and try to coach those teams a bit, give them spy setups, mm -hmm. and try to do anything they can to kind of uh, increase their chances of taking out one of the, mm -hmm. the bigger well, opponents. A lot of times the teams wind up not using it though. They think they they're, they're too paranoid. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Ro Rogue Capel got a setup in AT8, I think, to beat Hydra and wound up deciding not to use it. Hydra bought exactly what the intel we got said they would. Yeah. Um, there's a time Star Fraction against Bob. I remember there was even commentary talking about the fact that someone gave a PL gave a setup to Star Fraction to beat Bob that they didn't wind up using. They wind up winning anyway, but a lot of times you'll see these teams don't use the intel. So, so the lesson is uh, use your intel. Yeah. <laughs> Just believe what anyone tells you. Yeah, right. Believe what anyone that, That's what I do. Uh, so with that, somebody, somebody told me that the match is ready, and Excellent. I believe them. Hey. Uh, are we all going for Shadow Cartel? Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. Wow, this is a first. But good luck, Fearless. Good we luck. believe. We believe. Ish. So, do we have any setups that aren't a tinker? Oh no, I bombed. You bombed us. So. I'm sorry, guys. back everyone to this next match fearless empire versus shadow cartel i'm ccb fozzy joined once again by sir squeebles and i hope you like tinkers because we've got even more tinkers for you coming up uh although this is another uh, kind of different tinker than what we've seen through most of the day as uh, fearless empire has brought back their marauder plus tinker setup uh they've changed it up a bit they no longer have to get in there and now they've got more damage from vnis uh vex or navy issues but uh it still is uh, at its core a setup that relies on a chronos with a great tanky potential and then the rest of the team uses the Tinker to keep itself alive. Right, and on the Shadow Cartel, we see something that's, uh, I won't even call it more standard because it is a little bit of a different setup with Rattlesnakes, but they have two Rattlesnakes, a Nighthawk and an Eos, two Flycatchers, three Worms, uh, a Mollus, and two Burst. Uh, I think the Shadow Cartel comp is really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so we've got Geckos dropped uh, across the board here from the uh, Fearless Empire team as the match begins. Fearless Empire came in at zero. Uh, they're obviously trying to make sure that the opponent is as close to that Blaster Kronos as possible. And uh, Fearless uh, taking out these bursts uh, if they can really quickly. That's, I think, a smart move. Mm -hmm. And you saw one rep cycle come across onto Adam and then it drops, so presumably mm -hmm. that's a range issue. There's no e war interference here, and he and does he go goes. down. That's actually big. Yep. Um, interestingly, we, we discussed before the match, uh, if you're Shadow Cartel, you've got to look at something like a Vex or Navy issue, which importantly has a fairly limited drone bay. Um, and you've got to wonder if you can kite out and maybe even have your support kill some drones. Yep. Uh, that really is an option with a lot of these drone metas is some drone on drone action. So I'd expect that'd be what they'll do if the, if they can't kill the Proteus, but mm. uh, the Proteus is successfully dropping right now. Yeah. Weirdly, this is a shield, a dual tank Proteus it looks like. There is a shield booster on it. Um, I mean, it's not a terrible fit, um, but obviously it's not enough to keep it alive against right. his damage. And, and now, now he's just a lost male. Yeah. So uh, that's 
pretty much it. Uh, these VNIs, they're going to take them down really quickly. That's easy DPS off the field. Uh, the VNI can fit a really nice armor buffer tank, but it's still not going to have a TT resist profile. It doesn't matter now that they don't have Lachi. Um, but it, it, it definitely is a capable ship in something like this. But typically, you want your Lodgy Proteus to live beyond like the minute yes, and a half. Yes, that mark. tends yeah. to help. Yeah. Uh, the longer you can keep that ship alive, the better. Uh, there is a lot of damage coming in at, at that uh, Rattlesnake, uh, mm -hmm. Raytheon there. Uh, but uh, with the Vexor Navy issue down, this is a smart move for Shadow Cartel. They got to knock off this vulnerable DPS. Now, the Cronus is going to be very hard to kill. Cronuses have the ability to go into Bastion mode, which gives them incredibly strong tanks, but locks them in place. Right. Um, the reason you don't see a ton of Cronuses in the tournament is that in this kind of mat what this match is going to turn into, where it's just the Marauder versus the entire rest of the other team, right. um, the other team can get out of range of a Kronos a lot more easily than they could a Paladin or a Golem. And even when the Kronos isn't alone, I mean, obviously it's easy once it's down to just him, but um, it, it is sort of strange to see a gunboat used as your Marauder. Uh, the Paladin has been used successfully, absolutely, outside of the certain micro jump drive <laughs> incidents. Um, but yeah, the, the Kronos is just not going to apply as well or project as well as something yep. like a golem, which is why a golem is a really common pick. Uh, that DPS goes really far. Not necessarily true here. It did work out for him, though, that they did catch this rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. And by caught, I mean there's no tackle mods, but he's still dying. Yeah, so. he is going down. At this point, he's taking damage pretty much entirely from the um, Kronos. The Kronos is hitting uh. him with for low damage. He's w very deep into fall off at this point. Kronos is, have a lot of fall off. Mm -hmm. um, he is probably going to be able to kill the Rattlesnake. But uh, with the whole rest of the team collapsing around them, it's going to be probably a pretty easy points win for Shadow Cartel. Yeah, uh, that was probably pretty comfortable for them, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Th there was no moment there where uh, they weren't in complete control. I will say I definitely agree with going for the burst, though. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lodgy Frigate, especially in a 12v12 comp, there's so much damage on the field that uh, bursts are an easy thing to kill. We've seen a lot of things like heretics and worms used to kill off support wings effectively. Um, so, but the burst is still nothing to scoff at. It is a little yep. fragile. Uh, the reps are not massive, but they are consistent, and they uh, they can really sustain your frig wing, and they can add to the tank of even your bigger holes. So, yep. so if you remember a few seconds ago when I said the rattlesnake is going to die, obviously I was wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, the rattlesnake got enough range. He basically he moved out uh, to uh, quite far away from uh, the center of the arena now, and uh, was just able to get far enough out that the Kronos can't hit him anymore. Yeah, interestingly, well, I guess he had to have had a prop mod to get there, right? I, I wasn't watching his speed at all. He but never went all that fast. I think he just, because he started out at uh, like 30 kilometers anyway, okay. so he, they just started moving slowly away. Right. And uh, he's now basically just sitting there. Uh, doesn't need to do a whole lot. He's still moving away, but not, again, at any kind of fast pace. Uh, they're going to try to break this Kronos, but uh, a Kronos in Bastion is a very tough nut to crack. I will bet you a thousand isk that the Kronos dies. You know what? I don't think I'm going to take that bet, uh, considering that he's saying, already like in half armor. And I do mean the in-game currency, mm -hmm. just so we're very clear about that. But he's he is getting into low armor. And the great thing about uh, taking rattlesnakes into a tinker like this, where there's a battleship core, which is most often the case, is uh, he's not going to be able to mitigate any of that damage. And yep. uh, rattlesnakes are absolute sledgehammers. He does have smart bombs. I'd be interested to see how those are affecting the, the drone tank. Um, but I don't think it's going to be enough, and I am starting to regret my bet a little bit. Nope, never mind. I'm pretty it, confident. It, unless he can wipe out all these drones in like one of the next cycles. He's killing off some of the drones, but of course these are heal or, or He's killing a drones. worm as well, actually. This worm of... Uh, <laughs> What, how? Did the worm brawl into the smart bombs? Or the worm got in close enough to get hit by blasters. Uh, Great. And did end up dropping. Uh, I guess he, he wasn't keeping up enough transversal. Uh, the Kronos, as well, just boosted himself like uh, up. I, uh, I all feel the way back I up. feel foolish now. My faith in these rattlesnakes is uh, is turning me into a liar. I think the Kronos might have been bait tanking there. He may oh, have just yeah. let himself. <laughs> yeah. Because you see the reps he's getting at this point. He's getting like 40% of his armor in one go. And then uh, the flycatcher of Coriel decided uh, I'm just gonna sit still, and then once I hit armor, I'll try to move. And unfortunately, yeah. it didn't work out. But uh, I appreciate trying something different. And the Kronos, God, just die, please. <laughs> I need some isk. Shadow Cartel uh, proving that uh, there's no match that's uh, too in the bag for their small ships. <laughs> to make mistakes. Well, I, I think it's uh, sort of, they don't want to discourage uh, Fearless from coming mm -hmm. back next year. So I think this is Shadow Cartel investing. It's like not overfishing salmon, you know? You got to yeah. let them 
leave enough so that they're they're still there next year. And I think that's what they're doing here. I'm confused about whether this Chrono like whether this Chronos is actually Bay tanking or not. Because uh, now he's into structure. He was <laughs> tanking so well there right. for a moment. Right. Um, he may have just run out of pace in his AR. It's like the common fit for these will be dual rep AR, normal rep. And he's like a sliver of struggle. There and he goes. And dunked, yes. <laughs> that no. is the match. Yeah. That was exciting. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a really good time. <laughs> so with that, Shadow Cartel will be moving on. Fearless Empire is eliminated from this tournament. Uh, we're going to send you back to um, the guys in the analysis desk and then be back soon for Waffles versus the Methodical Alliance. Okay, we'll just chillax for a sec, everybody. And then we'll just let Graph like, explode, and it's going to be awesome. It's not going to be worth, you know, 500 bill, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> Do I, I, want like, to I want every that kind dead of, like, motherfucker out of the alliance. No, no, no. Every no, no, no. one. Bro. No mad. Welcome back to the desk. Uh, we all know that it's very important that Squeeples has a good time, so thank you guys <laughs> for providing that. I'm CCB Gargant, joined here by Apophony, Back in Alien, and CCB Rise. What did you guys think? I was right again. Yes, that was nice. <laughs> this is a strange turn of events. <laughs> it is, cool actually. Match. We got our, uh, I think it was our third Marauder of the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, by recollection, I don't think the Marauder teams are doing very well, are they? Mm -mm. I think all of them? Well, all of them uh, no. Did the Golem win? No. The Golem... They were definitely doing okay last weekend, but I, yeah, yes. I think today they've done really badly. Mm. I feel like the Kronos is just kind of an odd choice in that situation, too. I don't know, I feel like it's kind of a shorter range, you know, in, in, in a tournament like we were talking about, there's a lot of range projection going on, unless you're rail fitting it. Mm -hmm. And in that case, rail, Kronos, yeah, it kind of makes me squeamish, so yeah. yeah. Better <coughs> Marauders to bring for range. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's not, there's not a lot you, to you say. Like they, kind they of Fearless they, Empire died. Right. Yeah, we, we said before the match, they banned out the Tango and the Loki, Shadow could mm. tell banned those too. They didn't want to face uh, shield... Right. Tinkers, hmm. and I mean they disassembled a, an armor one. There's uh, pretty much nothing more to discuss about that. I think very good showing from Shadow Yeah, Fearless very did well it. Played. Fearless did a really good job of becoming lost males, as Squeebles put it. Mm. So that is all they are now. Well, yeah. they have gone home, and the next match us up is Waffles versus the Methodical are, are Alliance. You nervous yet? You are a Waffles representative. Waffles. Please win. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I have a set, I believe in you. I have a set of puns prepared uh, if they don't. So. Oh, oh God. God. I knew you would. I knew you would. <laughs> what puns have you got if, if the, it goes the other way? I or guess, are you just prepared? I guess I can quote a very popular song. Oh, God. I was waiting oh, for a song there. A very popular lyrics. jingle. We could call it a jingle. Is it, is, it, is it by Nickelback? I know you're... <laughs> oh. if, you say a, if you say a fan... Uh, you will not be here when the camera comes back. But uh, anyway. <laughs> the bands for this match uh, are Ageddon and Gollum from the Waffles team, and mm. the Methodical Alliance have banned the Astarte and uh, the Ishtar. Huh. Hmm. So, Methodical what? don't want a ridiculously high DPS set up on them. Like, mm -hmm. well, who does? In the start, but yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's specifically what they're scared of in this case. Yeah. yeah. But this still leaves both the, both the Gaila and the. Mm. The Rattlesnake Open. <laughs> yes, that, that is true. We could see you know, a continuation of the day with the Rattlesnake Gila. Um, I obviously am not in comms for, for once, so I have no idea why Waffles banned what they did. Uh, I, I've actually been kept out of our testing, so I don't really even know our setups. I'm, I'm useless. You're confusing the expert, guys. Well, you're confusing the expert. Mm. What do you guys think? What, does, what do these bands say to you? Oof. I don't know. Golem Geddon is mo much more interesting. The other two to me, the Ishtar Asart, they seem almost more like just banning high value ships that they're not interested in using mm. um, and rather than being associated with something super specific. Yep. Mostly because we've seen Rail Astartes, it yep. doesn't necessarily mean really high damage, but um, 
Geddon Golem is a little weirder. I mean, Golem usually is a team that wants to um, use a lot of E-War because they, like, that's the strongest Marauder and they don't want to have their kind of uh, E-War lo um, uh, strategy mm. uh, messed up by a Bastion module, but um, then combining that with the Geddon's a little interesting. And that's actually reminded me what I was going to say about last match. I finally remembered, like, that's five good. minutes later. Which is that uh, I think Fearless didn't bring any E-War at all. Yeah, zero well, control bar. We started the, zero, the control bar zero, and I think a, a trend we often see as tournaments move on is more and more um, focus on E-War. Uh, winning, winning a damp or ECM uh, or cap war tends to become more and more important late in the tournament, I think. So it's kind of disappointing, I guess, to see that they weren't really interested in mm. <laughs> messing right. with that at all. I think going back to the bands, I think uh, yeah. the Geddon band speaks to not wanting to be under cap pressure. I mean, yeah. there, there mm -hmm. aren't... You can, you can slap newts on a couple other different ships, but there's not... But really, we haven't seen like the cursor or anything that, that's got. We've seen the Ashimas, I guess, the Blood Raider yeah. ships. But, but you, you really, the Geddon speaks to. We don't want to have our cap outfit out from under us. We want to be able to run our modules, our hardeners, our guns, whatever it may be. And you know, that's that's the one that we've seen the most. So get it off the field. I think yeah. in general, it's interesting how we've seen the Geddon be a more popular neuter than the Battle. Obviously, it's less points, mm -hmm. but equally, mm -hmm. I think people are preferring that range bonus yes. Yes. over the amount bonus because mm -hmm. it means you know when you land on grid, it's going to be easier to get in range. Newts, you can apply the newt sooner, mm -hmm. and the AT is a match of like who can kill each other the fastest. It's yep. not who can each other, kill each other yep. full stop, it's who can be quicker. Yep. You pick up the first two ships, you get some lucky newts, like you turn off their prop mod, you catch them, you kill them, and you're at a massive advantage. Yep. And getting, of course, a little less points as well. Yep. Uh, so, with that trade off, it ends up looking really nice. Also, I, I'm gonna guess uh, which team banned the Geddon Golem? Uh, the Waffles. Waffles. Waffles yeah. I'm guessing, I want to guess at like Damp, Cerberus, or mm. Thriss. I can see that. Yeah. Mm. I want them to bring a bar guest so uh, we can talk about pancakes. I doubt pancakes. there'll be a bar guest. But uh, <laughs> the match is ready though, so right, we'll okay. see. Fantastic. Uh, can Waffles do it or is it the Methodical Alliance? Your predictions, please. Waffles all the way. I'm going to go with Waffles too. Yeah, they Waffles. They amused me in the past. Waffles I like Waffles. all the way. Methodical Alliance, uh, it's your ball. Whether you're into gate camping or jet can mining, you'll find Eve's best music mix at Eve Radio. Visit www.eve-radio.com today. I like waffles. I like waffles. I like waffles. Do you like waffles? Yes, yes I, I like waffles. Ah. And pancakes and French toast. Welcome back, everyone. This is CCB Fozzy, joined once again by Sir Squeebles, and we're bringing you Waffles versus the Methodical Alliance. We've got Apothne uh, shivering over there, uh, really hoping for his team, as uh, there's some really creative setups here going on. Methodical yeah. Alliance, it's not, it's not strictly a tinker because it doesn't have the Tech 3 rep, but we're seeing a Paladin, Triple Rattlesnake, Triple Jaguar, Kestrel team. I expect these Rattlesnakes are going to be cap transferring to each other to keep their tanks up. Mm -hmm. um, ASB's running all the time be interesting to see how well it works out against a much more traditional Waffles team. Yeah, the Waffles team is something that we've seen before, and I think it's been effective almost every time that it's used, barring any serious piloting errors. They've got double Claymore, one Scimitar, three Gila's, uh, three Worms, a Corax, and two Merlins. So mm -hmm. they definitely are going to try and emphasize kiting, uh, and they'll be successful given what Methodical has brought. But uh, that's some pretty monstrous tanking capability for Methodical. Yep, so the match has now begun. We've got Curators dropped by the uh, Rattlesnakes for Methodical Alliance. They're, I'm assume, going to try to knock out that Scimitar fast. We'll see if they can track it well enough. Um, but uh, the damage is not yet applied. There is some damps going on to the Rattlesnakes from Waffles. That's not going to actually do very much because the Rattlesnakes don't have missiles and the Rattlings can assign their drones to the undampable Paladin. So the only assumption you could probably make here, and yeah, now that's confirmed, Sir Phobos Knight and the Korax is taking damage. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, they want that Korax dead. Good on him. There goes the Jaguar, though, and really yeah, fast. That, that's what <laughs> I'm that's worried about. That's probably why they wanted yeah. the Korax dead. Yeah, makes sense now, looking back on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but so these Rattlesnakes are 
spending DPS with no result right now. And that is the absolute worst thing you can do in a tournament. Uh, if there's one rule, it's make sure you're applying it. Micro jumping out of the arena is probably worse. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, maybe, yeah. maybe. Uh, only slightly, though, but uh, the second rule of that is that uh, make sure you're applying it to the right target. Yeah. So we don't have either of those rules being followed. As the second jag is going down, and why are they not switching to something nice and fat that they can hit? Yeah, these are not doing anything significant. I mean, it, we're seeing, uh, there you go, another frigate off the field. Uh, the Waffles just uh, are able to easily pick apart these frigates. They've got the worms, the Korax, that are really, really good at killing frigates. Yeah. Uh, the Korax is, uh, oh, we've got micro jumps activated. Um, the oh, Paladin no. and all the uh, Rattlesnakes are going to try to micro jump on top of the Waffles team. They're going to try to jump in the middle of them, and uh, they were, are successful. They are oh, about to oh, land whew. in the middle of the Waffles team. Oh. Yeah, that uh, that is the most impressive thing I've seen mm -hmm. all year. <laughs> like that, that's gonna top the highlights list. Four people, not just one person, mm -hmm. but four people just MJD'd successfully so, only to show up for the Jaguar to die. Yeah. Uh, so now, again, the frigates still have no protection because the frigates can't micro jump with the battleships. Mm -hmm. It looks like they were trying to do some damage with the smart bombs from the Paladin, but yes. obviously that's not going to so kill these ships. The scimitar of Denail, mm -hmm. something along those lines, was uh, he wasn't ever tackled, but he did have a newt cycle on him, presumably a uh, heavy newt from the rattlesnakes. Um, but he kited right out because he wasn't tackled, and now that's just a faint memory. Yep, I mean, they had a painter on him for a bit and looked like they were going to try to apply damage to him, but now they've given up and switched back to the Korax. Right. Um, an odd choice, considering that they only have the one Kestrel left to keep alive. I guess the Kestrel might be their painter, and you don't want to lose that, yeah. or else you're going to lose a lot of your damage application. It could just be trying to avenge their uh, fallen Jaguar pilots, but I don't think it's going to work out well for them. Uh, I think this is a classic case of a group that looks at a ship, recognizes that it's got good tank, it's got good damage, um, and maybe not 100% understanding the projection on, yeah. it, on that damage. So this Rattlesnake of Bandit is going down. He is getting cap transfer from his friends. He's running a uh, what this, you would assume is an ASB. Um, there is the Paladin smart bombing the drone. So if the Paladin can clear off these drones from the heel as fast enough, they might be able to keep him alive. It's going to be very close. Though. So interesting minutia from this ca uh, camera angle. The Rattlesnakes are using like a traditional uh, cap chain. Mm -hmm. So they're making a complete circle. They're not funneling two cap transfers into the guy that needs it. So they're actually gaining a really, really small amount of capacitor. It's not negligible, but it's certainly not enough to fuel a, uh, a shield booster. So I think that's a serious mistake, and uh, I, I would I would want them next year to, to maybe... Maybe, cap focus a bit more. Maybe they decided that they wouldn't need cap boosters then because you need cap boosters to fuel. That is possible. Not... I mean, yeah, you can keep your hardeners on, and so it, it's not wasted. It's just it's not something you see here, and mm -hmm. obviously he, he didn't have enough cap to stay yeah. alive, so maybe something to think about. Yeah, so at this point, uh, with one rattlesnake down, that's uh, more than a quarter of the actual damage application. Well, yeah. well there's no uh, turret or no launchers on the rattlesnake, so it's yeah. some significant amount of damage from yeah. the <laughs> methodical so, team down. And, and a question to that end is, if you have no launchers in the high slots, you've obviously got the mm -hmm. one cap transfer, but per the rules, you can only have that one cap transfer. Yeah. Um, there is more than one high slot on a rattlesnake, snake and we did see newts so presumably each has at least one newt that's still a lot of space there's no extra smart bombs you would kind of think right, a smart bomb right, would also right. work but only the paladin has used smart bombs this right. fight um so my guess is that it's just lots of newts um some um uh, drone uh, range drone -like modules. Augmenters, yep. yeah, those yeah. those are probably mixed in there, but uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, not what you more kind of commonly see from rattlesnakes, right. which is using cruise missiles to take advantage of that big damage bonus they have. Yeah, this is uh, this has got to be painful for methodical mm -hmm. because, in the same way that a tinker works, hypothetically, once they lost one of those rattlesnakes, it sacrifices the tank even more on the other two rattlesnakes. I don't think that was really important because they can't apply damage. Yeah. So uh, this is one of those those matches that I'm sure Apothne was grinning from ear to ear as soon as he saw them go for the, the support ships with those sentries. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad plan. It's just rolling those dice. And, and if you don't connect, then you've, you've spent thousands of, of DPS that yeah. didn't go anywhere. So the second Rattlesnake now is going to go down. He's dropping into armor now and will probably go down much quicker now that he's in armor. Um, the rat the um, Paladin is killing drones with that smart bomb, but not fast enough. The healers right. have backups and they're just sending backups in as needed. Well, and, and one thing that I think is absolutely awesome here is that this Paladin pilot is still moving, which mm -hmm. might seem insignificant, but it means that this guy's at least thinking about what he's doing. He's, yep. he's drifting around to try and hit more drones. He's not panicking and, and bastioning. Um, a lot of people immediately bashing for the E-War immunity and the added projection. 
given that neither would benefit him greatly here. He's just saying, hey, I'll stay mobile. I'll keep my options open in case I do MJD into Oblivion or wherever he wants to go for his next cycle. Um, I'm hoping for a synchronized MJD out of the arena as an act of solidarity. They are aiming in the right direction to do that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm just waiting for it. I'm like... I'm as my face is as close to the screen as it can get without me going out of frame. Yeah. So uh, the all the new wave of drones have now caught up with this uh, rattlesnake. He was pulling back for a bit, but it looks like it's only a matter of time. The uh, oh, waffle team has lost a worm a to worm a boundary violation. Really? Yes. That yeah. worm was a boundary violation. <laughs> he just so, decided to fly out of the arena because okay. he was bored, I guess. Right. Uh, again, I go back to my salmon metaphor. Might be the reason, but I, I don't think so. Uh, that's kind of a Apothne needs to yell at him later. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't anywhere near the fight either. He just no, looks like he just, he just like decided out, to yeah. motor off to the side. He was trying to like approach the planet, maybe. I, I don't yeah, know. well, you know, yeah. do your own thing. That's what I always wanted say. to set up some PI colonies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now's not the best time, but mm -hmm. maybe Jove Space has some particularly nice planets. You try to pick so them up once per year when yeah. you come back from your lines <laughs> tournament, like be, harvest your stuff. I would love to write that article if that does end up being the case. But uh, this last rattlesnake is going down, and then I'm not going to bet a thousandist because it almost got me burned last time. It might my space wife would be furious. So uh, this time we'll just we'll just wait and see. I really don't think the paladin should die because there's not that much damage with this waffles comp. It is very sturdy, very mobile, but it's not the sledgehammers that we've we've seen from other groups. No, but that being said, healers do a lot of damage. So right. any time you have a setup with triple healer, you have the potential for a ton right. of damage. Um, the uh, healers for Waffles, though, fitted uh, not for full damage. Obviously, they're trying to squeeze on things like tank uh, because they've all got rocket launchers fitted. Yeah, uh, which... Which is a little bit odd. I, you don't get a lot yeah. of damage out of that. But uh, I think they're probably just focusing on tank and drones. Could really. you hypothetically kill drones with rocket healers? Very slowly. Yeah, yeah, I, I just don't... I, I don't know. I, stylistically, they're not even the coolest looking thing to put up there. Festival mm -hmm. launchers are allowed in the Alliance tournament. They something to consider for their next run. Yep. Uh, but uh, one way or another, it's still winning them this fight. Uh, yeah. There's uh, two minutes left, and it's now just a question of the, whether this Paladin dies. And of course, Methodical, I'm sure, would love to keep it alive. Uh, they are going to be knocked out of the right. tournament, but a good consolation prize would be not losing a very expensive Paladin. Right. This guy can go and, and get this Paladin stuffed and, and mounted mm -hmm. and all that. The uh, the interesting thing, to your point about the Gila's, right? Uh, the Gila is, a triple Gila setup is really all the damage you need. Yeah, technically, if, if you're piloting well. There are obviously some substantially tanky setups where it wouldn't be enough, but um, we've seen several teams pair them with EOS. We've even seen one or two teams, I think, that brought a Slepnir with them. Um, why a Claymore? Why not maybe a command ship with more damage? Is there any obvious reason? or? I mean, the Claymore uh, gives you the advantage of being able to hit at pretty long ranges. So these are heavy missile Claymores. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're not designed for max DPS. I think right. they're designed to provide the links and tank and then just sort of stay at the outskirts of the fight, like launching missiles in. Gotcha. Um, the other alternative for that, of course, is the Vulture, but the Claymore is faster and uh, you don't have to worry about tracking as much. So the heavy sure. missiles don't do as much damage as the Vulture, but at least you, don't, you can still hit things in close. Uh, looks like I maybe should have bet you another thousand is yeah. because it really is amazing actually that these um, we always say I think going into matches that uh, this Marauder is probably not going to die and every time that gets said the Marauder ends up dying. So the Marauder is still smart bombing. Uh, he's knocking out these drones slowly um, and uh, there is time being taken for like more waves of drones to arrive. Sure. So I think that is actually going to keep him potentially alive. He is still mm -hmm. sitting at like 30% armor. Uh, he's repping pretty solidly.